Hello everyone, and welcome to my Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On July 17, 2023, The Young and the Restless will air. Ultra doesn't find Tucker's warning amusing, Victor explains what will happen to his children, and Chance and Sharon give way to their love. Victor makes himself a drink at the ranch and muses. Nikki enters and inquires as to what is wrong as he sits down at the chessboard. Victor bemoans the disintegration of their family. He has made every effort to reunite them, but nothing seems to be working. What has happened to cause him to feel this way, Nikki wonders. Victor laments the fact that Victoria has grown utterly unpredictable. Nikki is aware of his meaning. Victor argues that she forced Nick out of the company after initially refusing to let Adam lead Newman Media. Nikki is also not happy about it. Nick has been invited by Victor to work with his brother to turn McCall into a profitable business. He might be able to stop Adam from making mistakes. Maybe in a perfect world, thinks Nikki. Victor observes that now that the baby has died, his problem child Adam feels alone. He bemoans the fact that he feels alienated. He now realizes that he gave his kids too much freedom. Nikki's unsure of how she feels about where this is going. Adam observes Nick enjoying wine at the bar as they are in the jazz lounge. He sighs and approaches to sit next to him, saying, Hey, Nick snarls, will you leave Sharon alone for once? Stop looking for fresh methods to undermine her. Adam gives him a perplexed stare. It was Sharon's idea for them to consolidate enterprises, he claims, adding that he is not pulling Sharon into anything. Nick requests that he inform Sharon of his decision change. Even without making a decision, Adam queries how it even pertains to him. You ought to be with Sally right now, right? Nick claims that he shouldn't be lingering around Sally. Adam mocks, but your ex is defenseless. Nick yells at his brother and ponders why they aren't able to get along for even a short period of time. Adam queries whether Nick has even made an effort. The closest they've ever come is via faith. For Nick to be polite to him, he had to sacrifice a physical organ. It can all be a fruitless exercise in pleasing their father. Do you really believe that? Nick queries. Adam shrugs and says they might be better off giving up altogether. Chance assists Sharon in setting up the seats at Crimson Lights and informs her that Phyllis has finally turned herself in. Sharon guffaws that she'll keep the restaurant open for that. She is determined to restart the appliance and make him a cup of coffee. When she inquires about Phyllis, Chance replies that she appeared defeated and resigned. Sharon believes Michael instructed her to behave in that manner. Chance claims that the perp walk was as usual. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much trouble is Sharon in? Chance responds, 13 and a half, and mentions that her attorney suggested they may have some sort of legal defense. As they toast over their coffee cups, Sharon invites Chance to have a seat. Chance observes documents with Cameron Kirsten's name on every page as they approach a table. Cameron left Kirsten Incorporated to Sharon, according to Sharon. After having sex, Nate and Victoria converse on the pillow in the corporate suite. He would like to believe that this is not only sex. Victoria reassures him that she values the connection greatly and inquires about his expectations. Nate wants to collaborate with her every day and live permanently in the executive suite. Together, they are an unstoppable force. They'll return to their home after work. Nothing they can't solve together, and the sex is always fantastic. He is honest when he claims to be creating a future vision for her to react to. My course of action is obvious, and I don't feel guilty about any of it. The aspiration and need for success. Victoria ponders. You want everything. Nate begs her to provide him with one compelling argument against their sharing everything. They embrace. Nikki believes Victoria has matured at the ranch. Victor queries at what price? He complains, she tossed her own brother aside. He is aware that everything was done to let Nate in via the back door. After witnessing what that person did to his own family, he doesn't trust that person. He granted Adam a new business, and he then used that position of authority to pursue Newman Media. Where is this all heading? 
Nikki queries. Victor claims he's been too laid back and vows to change. Nick considers it amusing that Adam and he have finally decided to give up on each other at the jazz lounge. Sadly, his father prefers that they collaborate at McCall. He is adamant, especially after being separated from Newman. Adam isn't shocked that Victoria made room for her male toy. He inquires as to Nick's feelings over his first-time ejection. Big Brother watching over him is the last thing he needs. Their phones both go off. They each get a message telling them to get to the ranch. Nate and Victoria are both in their suite and have received the identical text message calling them to the ranch. She makes the decision to phone her father and inquires about the situation. She is assured that everything is all right, but Victor requests that they all meet him at the ranch, adding, bring Nate along. He then puts the phone down. Victoria expresses her disapproval of this to Nate. Nate summarizes that Newman is involved. Victoria has a gut instinct that things won't turn out well. When Nick gets to the ranch, Nikki and Victor reassure him that they're both doing ok. When Adam enters, he immediately thinks that Nick and he are being forced to collaborate on projects at Adustus International. Nick makes a frown and asks, is McCall getting a new name? It signifies burned and singed, according to Victor. Scorched, as in scorched earth, is what Adam prefers, particularly now that Victor is attempting to control him and his future once more. Victor enters as Victoria and Nate enter, saying, it will all stop tonight. Tucker and Audra run into each other at the athletic club's bar. He informs her that the stars are finally aligning for him and that he is in a good mood. To celebrate, he wants to get her a drink. Audra is shocked that he's even speaking to her. They haven't had the finest relationship. She makes a frown as Tucker wraps his arm over her and says, I forgive you. He makes molas jokes when placing beer orders. Unamused, Audra says. The point is that you have to put away the past, Tucker explains, adding, McCall Unlimited, Pesh. He is liberated. The world and all of its fascinating possibilities is now mine, he says in his toast. He sounds tipsy, according to Audra, and he's rambling. Tucker snickers, saying he's so freaking delighted that he's a little giddy. Audra requests more information. Tucker is hesitant to reveal the news to her out of fear of ruining the deal. She is thrilled for him since she thinks her future is also quite bright. Is it? Tucker queries. Do mention... Kyle sends Audra a text, which Tucker then sees. Kyle Abbott. He gasps. You think of that as having a bright future. Chance at Crimson Lights finds it unbelievable that Cameron would leave Sharon his employer. According to Sharon, he had no family to speak of. Perhaps this would be his last lasting contribution to society. Chance queries her about selling it. Sharon has a plan, but she won't be doing that. I'm going to manage this business and reinvent and rejuvenate it. Chance is awestruck. At first, Sharon believed it to be the equivalent of blood money, but the basic operation is sound. She now has a new purpose as a result of his leaving her in this business, and she is eager to see where it leads her. Look at you right now, says Chance in awe. All of it amazes him. Sharon acknowledges approaching Adam about merging. Chance believes it makes sense. A joke from Sharon goes, except for the Adam part. Their businesses have a tremendous chance of success together. Chance won't spoil all that happiness. In fact, it's quite contagious. I adore seeing you in this light. They suddenly start kissing. As Sharon and Chance engage in intense kissing, she begins taking his shirt buttons off. Sharon pauses and requests that he wait a moment. She returns to kissing and undressing him after locking the door and turning out the lights. He is told by Sharon, let's go back to my office. They quickly enter the back through the door. Victor discusses his complaints with his kids at the ranch. He over-empowering them. Victoria declined his offer to let her lead McCall. Then, in order to include Nate in her close group of friends, she forced her brother out of the business. Nate has potential, but the damage he caused to his own family makes him wary of him. He purchased McCall because she refused to buy it and gave it to Adam, who then used it as a bulldozer to pursue Newman Media. He declares, I make the decisions, 
I set the rules. You carry out my instructions. Victor tells Nick that, starting tomorrow, he will assist Adam in managing Adustis and building a solid, successful business. Victoria will keep Nate on as COO. Once Adustis has grown strong, it will become a division of Newman Enterprises, as it long since ought to have been. Adam objects, saying, We had a deal. If he doesn't like it, he can leave, Victor informs him. He needs a response right away. Nick responds with, Sure, fine. You haven't really given me much of a choice, Victoria muses. Adam departs. Sharon and Chance share a passionate kiss in Sharon's workplace at Crimson Lights. He takes off his shirt and unbutton her blouse. After Sharon kisses his chest, he carries her to the sofa and lays her down before lifting her up. Chance licks her neck gently before moving back up her body. Audra inquires whether Tucker has a problem with Kyle at the GCAC bar. However, Tucker cautions her not to have high expectations. Although she recruited him as her right-hand guy, Audra disagrees. When she had a roll in the hay with him, Tucker wonders if it happened before or after. Tucker wages her a vacation to Vegas with him on Kyle not disappointing her. The wager doesn't pique Audra's attention. Tucker laughs and emails Kyle back as she leaves. Go get him, Tiger. Victoria serves drinks for Nate and her at Newman Enterprises, and Nate remarks, This is exactly how you'd hoped it would play out. We have McCall Unlimited, and I might add that there was little or no bloodshed, Victoria grins. Either Adam is serving them or he has left. They raise a toast. After having sex, she and Chance kiss in Sharon's office. Any regrets? He queries. Chance cries out, No one's here, man. As someone knocks, we shut down. The door is being slammed repeatedly by the person. Sharon becomes aware that Adam has left her two missed calls. Victor compliments Nick for following orders at the property. Adam was given a chance and it paid off, saying so be it. Nick reflects, if Adam goes along with it, he's going to be more volatile and unpredictable than ever. Victor promises to be done with him if he doesn't get in line. Sharon gets ready at Crimson Lights and goes to let Adam in. He knew she was still there when he noticed her automobile in the parking lot. He informs her that since Victor pulled a quick one and left a dustus, her proposal is no longer relevant, but I'm delighted to enter with you. Together, we can turn Kirsten's business around. I no longer want anything to do with my father or my family. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.